Phil here. So what's going on today, Scott and I are on our way to Eagle, Alaska, and from there on to Dawson to float the Yukon River down back across the U.S. border to Eagle again. Uh, Scott's done this trip once before years ago, but for me this is a first. Several firsts actually. I've never been to Eagle, never had a reason to, and never been to Dawson. In fact, uh, I haven't even been across the Canadian border for about 30 years now. So this will be an interesting trip. Uh, Yukon's very different from the type of rivers I normally float. It's much bigger, faster flowing, so it should be a fun trip. Every good adventure starts with a good hearty breakfast, and our favorite place to get breakfast is at Little Richard's Family Diner. Part of the joy of coming here is simply the decor, as you can see, and of course, wonderful omelets, hash browns, and Scott's favorite, biscuits and gravy. So we'll get a quick breakfast here and head on down the road. Right now we're just leaving Delta Junction. I'm going to make a quick stop at Delta Meats, pick up some snacks to go with the whiskey on this trip, and then on to Toke, where we'll probably have dinner at Fast Eddie's in Toke uh, before heading on up the Taylor Highway to Eagle. Oh, just passed a cow moose beside the road. Don't know if the camera caught that or not. I'm sure we'll see plenty more on this trip. All right, here we are, Delta Beach right up ahead. This is a local butcher shop. They make some really great summer sausage and pepperoni sticks, and they offer farmed elk and bison products as well. So always a good place to stop and get some snacks for the trip. Back on the road again, heading down the Alcan Highway towards Toke. Next stop, Fast Eddie's for dinner. Firewood along the side of the road. That's the purple flowers you see everywhere. Uh, they're called fireweed because they're the first thing to come back after a fire. I've seen hillsides, entire mountain slopes that were all purple the year after a forest fire. Really gorgeous. So we're in Toke now. We're going to top off the gas and get a bite to eat at Fast Eddie's uh, before heading on to Eagle, which is another 160 miles. First 60 miles, I'm told, is paved. Then it's going to be 100 miles of dirt road. And from what I've heard, it's pretty spectacular dirt road in some places. Uh, they don't call it the top of the world highway for nothing. So looking forward to that. Uh, should be really interesting. Okay, looks like Scott had a change of plans, and we're going to get food first.
No trip to the 40 mile country would be complete without a stop at Chicken, Alaska. Story goes it was named Chicken because the founders couldn't agree on the proper spelling of ptarmigan. So after a quick stop there to relieve ourselves and pick up more road snacks, it's back on, on the way to Eagle. Coming from Fairbanks, this trip is as much a road trip as a canoe trip. And the road there is actually really spectacular. We've got a lot of sections like this where the road is just perched up on a steep hillside, looking over the river below. Uh, other times crossing over the ridge tops. There's definitely a reason they call this the top of the world highway. And the road itself isn't too bad. A uh, few potholes, washboarded areas, but overall for a gravel highway, it's in not bad shape. And uh, though it could be narrow at times. Last couple miles before we get to Eagle. <laughs> I think Scott's getting in a bit of a hurry. He's speeding up more and more on these roads. This section's not too bad. We went over some pretty rough stuff and some pretty narrow stuff with cliffs and drop-offs. And this is just a little bit sloppy. <laughs> Speed zone ahead. I don't think I've been, I, I've maybe hit 40 miles an hour once in the past hour and a half, two hours. It's mostly been 25 to 35 miles an hour. So here we are on the final descent into Eagle. All total, it was about eight hours driving time from where we departed in North Pole to Eagle, Alaska, which, you know, this was not bad road conditions. If there had been a lot of rain or something, it probably would have taken a couple hours longer. Well, we're going to try and get a meal and a room for the night here. Uh, it's about eight o'clock and it's going to be about another four hour drive to get over to Dawson. So. That will put us in there, there around midnight, which is a bit on the late side. So overnight here in Eagle, uh, if we can't get a room, we're of course got full camping gear. So we'll head on over to the campground. Um, and hopefully we can get a hot meal. But again, if not, we're fully set up to camp. We've got plenty of food with us. One thing that caught me off guard in Eagle that you need to be aware of is Nobody in Eagle takes credit cards. Be sure to bring some cash with you. Unfortunately, we were too late getting into Eagle and everything was closed for the night. So it's off to the campground next, uh, set up a campsite, uh, break out some dinner and uh, get started again the next morning. The next morning, we topped off with gas and Eagle and headed back down the highway after making reservations at the hotel for our return trip. And of course, back through the construction zone again. So after a short delay waiting for the road construction, we're off to the next section of the highway towards the border and on to Dawson. And this is the section that gets the road its nickname, the Top of the World Highway. The views up here are absolutely spectacular. Right up on top, just you can see for miles and miles in every direction out over the 40 mile country.
After a four hour drive from Eagle and a short stop at the border that was uneventful and easily crossed, we arrive on the opposite bank of the Yukon River from Dawson. Well, we waited here for several minutes. Uh, actually, we had about a half hour wait as there was quite a line for the, the Yukon Ferry. The ferry is operated by the Yukon and Canadian government and is free to anyone who shows up. Just pull up in line and wait for your turn. And here comes the ferry now, so we should be boarding pretty quick. I think that's you. Okay. Just going to see Tony. I'm just waiting when he says go, I want to be ready to go. You can make the ferry into the bridge. Drive straight ahead, young man. But I would argue not very quickly. I'm guessing that boat hasn't floated for a while. Not in my lifetime. My experience. So here we are in the historic Gold Rust town of Dawson. After a little bit of shopping, pick up a river guide and a few other essentials like bear spray, we headed over to the Triple J Inn and got us a good late lunch, early dinner before heading back across the river to the campground for the night. Uh, next morning, after breakfast, we came back over to the Dawson side of the river and used the public boat launch to get our canoes all unloaded, set up, park the vehicle to wait for our return, and time to head on down the river. The river itself proved to be real easy paddling. Uh, swift current, I mean, we were looking at seven, eight mile an hour current. At times we were hitting 15 miles an hour but all really smooth. The, the only waves we really hit were right below Dawson. And I think most of that was that probably due to yep. wake off of the ferry. Uh, the, the, this is just a really new experience for me. I, I've never paddled anything this big before. Uh, just a whole different mental uh, set going on here. You know, when you see an island you want to pull over and stop on, one, the island is still two miles ahead and the river's so big and moving so fast that had to get used to the fact that had to start planning and getting set up to land on that island two miles ahead. Otherwise, just get swept right past it. The high water was covering most of the campsites along the river, so we did a long day the first day and pushed on down to the 40 mile, where the Yukon uh, government and I understand First Nations groups uh, have preserved the historical town of 40 mile and maintain a really nice campsite there with mowed tent sites, uh, food and equipment lockers and trash cans. So really this proved to be a really nice campsite. 
Our second day on the river proved to be pretty nice with easy paddling again and still just spectacular scenery all around. However, that afternoon the wind kicked up and we pulled over on this little low gravel bar here and set up the chairs and kicked back to wait it out for about four hours before we were able to head on down the river again and start looking for a campsite for the night. So here's our camp for third night on the river. Just this big long sandbar on the tail of an island. Uh, we're about mile 77 on our 104 mile trip down the river. So yeah, give us about, about 35 miles to go tomorrow. Shouldn't be too bad of a paddle. We had to take a long break today because the wind kicked up and it was just getting too hard to control the canoes. So we set up the lawn chairs, kicked back on a nice little gravel island uh, for about four hours before we were able to continue on down the river. Uh, tomorrow we're supposed to have, we got some more clouds rolling in tonight. The last forecast we saw, because we haven't had any kind of connectivity for the last three days, said that it was supposed to start raining tonight and uh, be rain showers off and on all through tomorrow. So uh, hopefully that doesn't include wind and we'll make good progress down to Eagle where we've got a hotel room waiting for us. Can't wait. So for once the forecast proved accurate and it rained most of the night, it rained hard. It was absolutely loud inside the tent at times. But the next morning it had cleared up and left us with this somewhat foggy low clouds, but otherwise beautiful day to start on down the river. So after breakfast and getting the boats loaded up again, it was time to head on down the river for the last leg to Eagle. All in all, I'd say this was a really good trip. Uh, we did have a few wildlife encounters, uh, which I didn't get on film. We had a cow and calf moose that jumped in the river in front of us and swam across, which made for some quick back paddling to make sure we didn't get too close to them. Uh, another time as we were coming up on the 40 mile campground, Scott was startled by something that growled and snarled at him from the bushes right next to the river. As I back paddled to try and get some distance from the river, I came up alongside it. And again, something in the brush growled and snarled at me and then went scampering up the bank. Turned out it was a wolverine. That's only the second time I've seen one in 32 years in Alaska and definitely the closest I've seen one. So that was cool. Uh, we also passed a cliffside at one point where we could hear baby falcons uh, crying for their mama up on the cliffside. We never did figure out where exactly the nest was on the cliff, but about a half mile down the river, we saw a peregrine sitting in a tree branch uh, out over the river. So that's pretty cool. I've, I've seen falcons before that I thought was peregrines, but they were high enough up, far enough away that I couldn't tell for, for sure. So again, that was, that was a neat experience for me. The final day proved to be more easy paddling down to the takeout at Eagle. Uh, we were in and out of some little rain showers off and on, so whipping the raincoats on and off. At one point, uh, just before we got into Eagle, we got hit with a pretty heavy squall, so we pulled up on shore and kind of hunkered down under the willow trees for a little while until it passed, but overall pleasant float as the rest of the trip had gone. Unfortunately, I ran out of camera memory by the time we got to the takeout. 
But it was uneventful. We pulled up to the boat ramp at uh, Eagle, right next to where Scott had left his car, unloaded into Scott's car, hit the uh, payphone nearby to check in with the U.S. border. Again, uneventful. After that, we went, checked into our hotel rooms for the night, had a good meal, good night's sleep, hot shower. Uh, next morning, it was just repeating the drive there, driving back to Dawson to recover my car, and then from there back to Toke, uh, where we got a pizza at Fast Eddie's, and Scott decided to get a room for a night, and I pushed on home so that I could spend the next day getting unpacked and cleaned up before going back to work. I really enjoyed this trip, and I'm really glad Scott and I had the opportunity to do it this year. The 40 Mile Country, is, like I said before, is totally new to me, uh, and it's really impressive. I, I, there's a lot of history there. I, it's an area I really want to go back and spend some more time exploring. Uh, I don't know that I'll float the river again. I really enjoy the smaller Clearwater rivers. I typically paddle a lot more, but I'm glad I did it once. It was quite the new experience. Next year I'm hoping to go back and spend a few days exploring Dawson and some of the historic areas around there. Maybe spend some time hiking up in the 40 mile area and just looking for wildlife and exploring the territory some more. So look forward to that next summer. So thanks for watching and please press the like and subscribe buttons and hopefully I'll get some more videos out here this year and some more next. Keep watching. Thank you.